And so we're back and ready to continue. And I thought that we would talk a little bit about initiation. You know, initiation is something that almost all cultures and traditions from the beginning of humankind had in common. And initiations are something that marks your life from before it happened to after it happens. It marks a threshold in your in your soul's journey through life that shows that you have made a step forward, a significant step forward, and that you're not the same as you were before. You have grown somehow, you've progressed, you've advanced to another state, another status in your life. And it's important. And so many traditions honor various initiations of life by having a party or a celebration. I'm thinking of christenings, um, where you're officially born into your spiritual life. I'm thinking of coming of age ceremonies, um, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, quinceañeras, um, you know, all, all different cultures have coming of age ceremonies. I'm thinking of weddings and uh, promotions at work and even funerals are, are a kind of uh, initiation into the afterlife. So um, I'm thinking about how uh, you have to go through certain trials and tribulations somehow in order to uh, complete your initiation into the next stage of your life. Uh, uh, the knights had to go through initiations in order to become officially knights or uh, in Native American culture sometimes in order to become a brave uh, you had to go through initiation. In Australia the walkabout and the indigenous people of Australia they did the walkabout and that was very difficult uh, but it was the initiation that marked you as someone who had reached adulthood or whatever the next stage was, elderhood, sagehood so initiations are very important. And uh, one of the initiations that is common to some cultures um, could be called a dismemberment. A dismemberment is where you uh, invite the spirits to completely take you apart, limb by limb, until you are completely eradicated. Uh, you become a formless being. Um, and it, it doesn't have to hurt. I think it's that sometimes in some cultures it does hurt, but for us, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to hurt. But uh, the idea is that you're asking to be taken apart, experience formlessness, and then ask to be put back together in a better way, in a way that has less uh, incompleteness, uh, less. Um, fear, less anger, less resentment, less sadness. So, uh, so dismemberment sound kind of bad, but there, it's a beautiful thing um, when you ask to do it uh, in the in the spirit way. And so we're gonna we're gonna have a dismemberment today. But before we do that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the idea that. In some ways, when you have a big loss, a big loss, that it's a kind of dismemberment. It's a kind of an initiation. It does mark a place in your life where everything changes, where who you were yesterday and is very different from who you are tomorrow. Uh, it's certainly a difficult initiation, hard, very hard. But it can also be a time when you do a lot of growing, when you when your heart becomes bigger, more capable of feeling a broader range of happiness as well as sadness, where you have a greater capacity for compassion, and where you just become more of who you are. It doesn't feel like that while you're going through it, definitely it feels horrible. Uh, and yet you get moments of clarity here and there where you actually can see yourself and see what's happening and that 
you actually are growing that your spirit is on a path and it's in moving in a good direction but but there is a period of that grief process where you do feel like your life has been completely torn asunder that you are pulled apart and that nothing of your life is the same as what it was and in some ways you just feel like you have been reduced to nothingness for a while but only for a while and in those times when you feel like you've been reduced to nothingness um, it's good to think about another kind of dismemberment that happens in nature and it's definitely a kind of initiation definitely a transformation and I think about what happens to a caterpillar and you know the caterpillar for the period of its life when it's still a caterpillar it lives on the ground and it's really pretty much always either on the dirt or on a plant and it doesn't move very far it pretty much lives on the plant that it eats because very often caterpillars only eat one kind of a plant and so they pretty much stay in one spot but within the caterpillar is this road map this uh, DNA plan that it isn't even consciously aware of but it knows what it was meant to be and so at some point it responds to that calling of its roadmap of its plan and it begins to build itself a cocoon and that cocoon is a safe place for it to go through this big transformation just like I hope that this circle is a safe place for you to go through some of the grief that you're working through right now it's a place where you can be quiet and where it can be dark and you can just be and so while the, the caterpillar is in this cocoon its body is completely breaking down everything about it has just become liquid there's no longer eyes there's no longer a heartbeat there's no longer any kind of a nervous system it is absolutely just liquid pure liquid that has its DNA in it and so from this place of formlessness real literal formlessness the plan goes into action and slowly a new form emerges and the, caterp the caterpillar liquid is gradually beginning to take shape into a very new shape and suddenly as it comes out of its cocoon it's an entirely new being a winged being a being of the air a being that can have experiences that the caterpillar could never have that can go places the caterpillar never could go and so that's kind of what this initiation is like you'll be able to experience things that you probably never experienced before when you emerge from this and do things that you never could do before so I hope that you can take heart in that so now we're going to do a dismemberment journey and don't be scared it won't hurt at all but go ahead and get yourself into your nice comfortable position and get nice and still and I will lead you through this So take some nice deep breaths and know that you are once again in the center of the heart of the creative powers of the universe and let yourself 
Go back to that very relaxed state that you go to when you journey. And notice that all the, the tension has left your body and that everything has gone soft. Your bones are soft. Your muscles are soft. Your skin is soft. The surface beneath you is soft. Everything is very easy and calm. And you feel all of your thoughts sinking away from your head and down into the earth so that your brain is empty of thought. And you are just feeling very peaceful and calm. And now take yourself to a beautiful beach. It may be a beach that you know, or it may be some imaginary beach that you've never seen that is completely perfect in your mind. The perfect, perfect beach. And spend some time experiencing the beauty of this beach. Kick your shoes off, feel the hot sun, the pet hot sand under your feet. Hear the roar of the water as it laps in and out. Hear the seagulls cry. Just spend a little time enjoying the beauty, the smells, the colors, the sounds of this beautiful beach. And now call your power animal to you because you want to experience this journey with the help of your power animal. You want some company. So just set the intention that your power animal should come to you and there it will be right next to you. And now walk over to the water's edge. And stand right at the edge so that your feet are sort of in the water and sort of not. And you know that in this spot, you are in a very betwixt and between place. A place that many believe the veils are very thin when you are neither here nor there. You're neither in one place or another. You're not completely on the beach or completely in the water. You're in the betwixt and the between. And in these betwixt and between places where the veils are very thin, you are able to experience the world of spirit much more easily. And magical things can happen. So now go ahead and lie down right in this spot so that your body is sort of parallel to the water's edge and you're actually on the water's edge. Lay right on the edge so that part of your body is in the water and part of your body is out of the water. 
and just experience what this feels like. To feel the water lapping at you from one side. And to feel the hot sun on the other side. The warm sand underneath it. And the tide is beginning to come in and so as it laps across you, you notice that it's it's covering more and more of you with each wave. And more and more of the sand goes out underneath you with each, each wave. And you feel the hot sun on your face and on your body. And you feel it sinking into you. And it feels so good. And after a while, you sort of become a part of the sun. You feel like this light, this heat has become a part of you and you are a part of it. So that you can really not tell anymore where you end and the sun begins. And after a while you notice that the sand beneath you seems to be, the edges are blurred between where you begin and the sand ends. You really can't see where the edge is. You can't feel where the edge is between you and the sand. It's as if you're a part of the sand and the sand is a part of you. And now the water that's coming in lapping at your skin. It feels so natural. It seems like you are somehow related to this water and that there's an ebb and flow in you that matches the ebb and flow of the waves. And that now it, it just doesn't seem like you can tell the difference anymore between where the waves end and you begin. You are a part of the water, and the water is a part of you. And so to a certain way, you feel like you have disappeared. But in another way, you feel like you have become so expanded to encompass the sun, the sand, the water, like you are all one. And allow yourself to just melt into this formless, formless state and be there.
And now as you begin to become aware again that you are yourself, you have the awareness and the trust that you are going to be reassembled by loving forces in a beautiful way, in a way that hopefully leaves out some of the hardship and some of the darker emotions and thoughts that may have been haunting you. That whatever healing you most need today is a part of the reassembly of you after this dismemberment. And so just allow yourself to come back into ordinary awareness. Come back from the beach. Come back into your body. Be aware that you have a body. Be aware that you are breathing. And that you are where you are. And it may take a little bit longer for you to come back into your ordinary awareness from this journey, and that's okay. Take whatever time it needs. And when you're ready, go ahead and take some notes in your journal. And then meet me back at the next video.